Chapter 9. Coloured Chalks. Jack had been petitioning his history teacher, Miss Verity, to be allowed to bring Grandpa into her classroom all term. At his new school, they'd started studying World War II. Who better to learn about it from than someone who'd actually been there? What more? What's more, all the other kids could see how cool his grandfather was. Maybe then, having a collection of model aeroplanes wouldn't be so sad after all. Miss Verity was a tall, thin woman who wore long skirts down to her ankles and frilly blouses up to her chin. Her spectacles hung down from her neck on a silver chain. She's one of those teachers who somehow managed to make an exciting subject deathly dull. History should be thrilling, with its stories of heroes and villains who shaped the destiny of the world. Bloodthirsty kings and queens. Daring battles. Unspeakable methods of torture. Sadly, Miss Verity's method of teaching was mind-numbing. All the lady would do was write dates and names in her beloved coloured chalks up on the blackboard. Then her pupils would have to copy everything down in their exercise books. Facts, facts, facts. She would recite as she scribbled away. Facts were all she cared about. One particular history lesson, all the boys from her class clambered out of the window for a crafty game of footer in the, fo- in the playground. Miss Verity didn't even notice that they were gone as she never turned around from the blackboard. Convincing the history teacher to allow Grandpa into the classroom at some point had not been an easy task. In the end, Jack had to bribe her with a set of coloured chalks from the local newshaven shop. Fortunately for the boy, the owner, Raj, had sold the set of luxury chalks as part of his special offer. They had, some f- they had come free with an out-of-date box of fudge. It was lucky that history was the second lesson of the day, as Grandpa made his grandson rather late for school. First, it took a while to convince the old man that when Jack had said school, he did of course mean an RAF flying school, and not just the local comprehensive. Second, the shortcut through the park turned out to be something of a long cut. Grandpa had insisted on climbing to the very top of the tallest tree in the park so he could keep an eye out from enemy aircraft, which would be coming down from a great deal longer than going up. And in the end, Jack had to borrow a ladder from a nearby window cleaner to coax his grandfather to the ground. When the pair eventually passed through the school gates, Jack looked at his RAF issue watch and realised his history lesson had started ten minutes ago. If there was one thing Miss Verity could not abide, it was lateness. All eyes turned to the boy as he entered the classroom. Jack went bright red with embarrassment. He hated being the centre of attention. Why are you late, boy? barked Miss Verity, spinning around from her blackboard. Before Jack could reply, Grandpa stepped into the classroom. Wing Commander Bunting at your service, madam, he said with a salute, before bowing his head and kissing the teacher's hand. Miss Verity, she replied, giggling and covering her mouth nervously. The teacher was obviously flattered by Grandpa's gallantry. It might have been some time since a gentleman had made a fuss of her in this way. That the teacher giggled made the glass the glass giggle too. To silence them, Miss Verity gave the children one of her famous deathly stares. These were so chilling they always worked in an instant. Please take a seat, Mr Bunting. I have absolutely no idea you were coming in today, she glared at Jack. The boy offered his teacher a warm smile. But you are here, so let's make the best of it. I believe you are going to tell us about your life as a World War II fighter pilot. Roger, Grandpa replied. The teacher checked behind her, in case someone called Roger had entered the room. Who's Roger? It means, yes, miss, called out Jack. Pop your hand in the air if you have something to say, boy, she snapped before turning back to Jack's grandpa. We've just been studying the Battle of Britain. Please can you tell us some of your personal experiences of this battle? Grandpa nodded and twizzled the ends of his magnificent moustache. Certainly, madam. The first day of the Battle of Britain, you all knew the enemy had planned something huge. Total obliteration. That's what Mr Hitler wanted. Radar picked up a huge squadron of Luftwaffe Junkers over the coast, with Messerschmitt fighter planes acting as guard. There were so many that day, the sky was turned black with them. From the back of the classroom, Jack beamed with pride. The entire class was hanging, off the o- hanging on the old man's every word. For a moment, he felt like the coolest kid in the class. We had no time to lose. The enemy was coming in fast. 
If we didn't take the hail Mary, we would have been knocked out on the ground. Oh, no, said an enraptured girl in the front. Oh, yes, continued Grandpa. The old airfield would have gone up in flames. My squadron was first to be scrambled, and as a wing commander, I was led up to the charge. Within seconds, we were all in the air. Up, up, and away. I pushed my Spitfire to 300 miles an hour. Wow, said the boy at the back, looking up from his football magazine. 300 miles an hour? The air chief marshal radioed me to tell me we would be outnumbered. He said four to one. So I had to think fast. We needed an element of surprise. I ordered my squadron to hide up above the clouds. The plan was we would wait until the enemy was there, were so close that we could smell them, and then attack. So what was the date exactly, Mr Bunting, interrupted the teacher. I needed to put it on my blackboard in red chalk. Red chalk is only for dates. Miss Verity used strict colour coding for her blackboard. Red chalk, dates, green chalk, places, blue chalk, events, orange chalk, famous battles, pink chalk, courts, purple chalk, kings and queens, yellow chalk, politicians, white chalk, military leaders, black chalk, black chalk, doesn't show up well on a blackboard, use sparingly. Grandpa thought for a moment. Jack's tummy twisted. He knew dates were not the old man's strong suit. But eventually, Grandpa replied confidently. July the 3rd, 1100 hours. I remember it well. The teacher wrote these facts, facts, facts up on the blackboard, the red chalk squeaking as Grandpa continued. So I waited till the very last moment. As soon as I saw the first Mayor Smith emerge from under the clouds, I gave the order, DIVE! What year was this? Pardon me, madam. What year was this? Miss Verity pressed. Then disaster. The old man's face went blanker than blank. From the back of the classroom, Jack, Jack dived in to defend his grandfather. Miss, it's best you don't keep on interrupting by asking questions. But this is a history lesson. We need fox, 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 replied Miss Verity. Just please let the wing commander finish his story, miss, and we can get to, to all we can get to all those facts later. Well, very well, muttered the history teacher, grasping her red chalk in readiness. Please carry on, Mr Bunting. Thank you, madam, said Grandpa. Now, where was I? It was clear the, old, the poor old man had lost his thread. It was a good job that his grandson knew the story so well. He'd heard this particular tale of daring do hundreds of times, but never tired of it. Jack prompted his grandfather. You saw the first measure, Smith, and gave the order to dive. That's right, man. As soon as my squadron of Spitfires descended through the clouds, we realised that this would be the fight of our lives. Grandpa's eyes lit up. He was back in the moment, as if it was yesterday. The radar had estimated 100 planes in total. This looked more like 200. 100 Yonkers and as many Measuresmiths. As for us, we had just 27 Spitfires. The children were enraptured. Miss Verity was busy scribbling up her precious facts, facts, facts on the blackboard, like how many aircraft on each side, in an array of multicoloured chalks. As soon as she had finished, she switched back to red chalk for dear Tony and opened her mouth as if she was about to speak. But before she could say a word, the entire class went, Shh! Grandpa was on a roar now. All the children were eating out his hand. I pressed on my machine guns and battle commenced. It was thrilling and terrifying in equal measure. The sky was filled with bullets, smoke and fire. Bang! I hit my first measure, Schmidt. The Luftwaffe pilot. Pull a shoot it out. Bang! And another. Our mission that day was to take down the Yonkers. They were the deadly ones. Each one of those bombers was carrying tons of explosives. If we didn't stop them... Their bombs would be raining down on the men, women and children of London. Up in the skies, the battle raged for what seemed like hours. The, R the RAF must have shot down 50 enemy aircraft that day, continued Grandpa. Many of the other Luftwaffe planes were so badly damaged that, that they had to retreat back across the channel. Quick smart. My squadron returned to base that day as heroes. All the children in the class burst into wild applause. Hooray! As the applause died down in the classroom, Grandpa began again. But this was no time for celebration. We knew the enemy would be back, and soon. Even in greater numbers than before. The Battle of Britain had well and truly begun. 
As for my squadron, I lost four brave pilots that day. The old man's eyes glistened with tears. The entire class sat in stunned silence. So this was what a history lesson could be. The boy sitting next to Jack turned to him and whispered, Your grandpa is a legend. I know, replied Jack and smiled. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mr Bunting, said Miss Verity, loudly, breaking that spell. We are nearing the end of the lesson now. I have my red chalk poised at the ready. We need to note down all those facts, facts, facts. So please, could you tell us all the year this happened? The year, replied Grandpa. Yes, I had to put it on the board. If my pupils are to have any hope of passing the exam next term, we need to know facts, 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 and yet more facts. The old man looked at the teacher, confused. It's this year. What do you mean this year? asked the teacher. This year, madam, 1940. The class chuckled uncertainly. Surely the old man was joking. Jack shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Miss Verity gave everyone another of her famous death stares. And there was silence once more. You seriously think it's 1940? Yes, of course it's 1940. King George VI is on the throne and, Miss, and Mr Churchill is the Prime Minister. No, no, Mr Bunting. This is 1983. It can't be. Yes, yes. Queen Elizabeth II is on the throne. And the wonderful Mrs Thatcher is the Prime Minister. Grandpa did not look at all convinced. In fact, he stared at the teacher as if she was bonkers. Mrs a lady prime minister? You must have a screw loose, madam. I think it is you who's the screw loose, Mr Bunting. Well, thank you so much for your oh-so-informative visit, said the teacher. Now, goodbye. As if shooing a pigeon, Miss Verity ushered the old man out of his chair. Under her breath, breath she muttered to the class, No need to write down a thing. The old man said, after all, He doesn't know what year it is, and he's still wearing his slippers. Poor Grandpa stood at the front of the class. He'd been soaring in the sky. Now, looking, now he looked like he had crash-landed on the ground. Jack's heart ached for him. Dring! The bell rang, not a moment too soon. The boy had never been so relieved for a lesson to have ended. Jack pushed past the other children to get to his grandfather, grandfather as they all shambled, shambled out the classroom. It had gone from being the best history lesson ever to the absolute worst. Just as Jack reached Grandpa, Miss Verity called the boy back. Jack, may I have a word, please? A moment, sir, said the boy to his Grandpa, as he plodded over to his teacher. Promise me you will never bring your grandfather into my classroom again, the lady hissed. I promise, replied Jack. There's no way I'm bringing him back here. The boy spun around and reached out for Grandpa's hand. His old skin felt almost like a child's, soft and silky. Come along, Wing Commander. Let's return to base. I, I, do, I, I don't understand, muttered the old man. Was the briefing not clear? Did I let you down? Seeing his grandfather like this was not hard. It was, it was hard for Jack not to cry. But Jack was determined to be strong. No, Wing Commander, you didn't. You never have, and you never will.